The Overwatch 2 beta has redone lighting for every map brought over from Overwatch 1. While some of these changes are minor, most maps have a very different presentation. In this video, I'd like to highlight some of these differences and give my thoughts along the way. Starting with the map that received the least amount of changes, Watchpoint Gibraltar appears nearly identical to its Overwatch 1 version. This similarity does give us a good comparison between both games, and outlines the increased ambient occlusion, making inner corners seem darker. The hangar is also mostly unchanged, save for the added fog coming through the now open ceiling. Overall, there is much more fog in this map, leading to the colors being slightly more washed out. Anybody unfamiliar with the Overwatch 1 version of this map would be hard pressed to notice the differences. Dorado has had a time of day change, leading to the map being brighter and warmer than before. The last point remains mostly unchanged, again highlighting the increased ambient occlusion, giving the lighting a softer look. Although the night version of this map looks nice, the warm lighting blends with the textures nicely, since it's not overpowering enough to erase the art style of the original map. The same can't be said for Route 66. I find that this redesign completely destroys the aesthetic of the original map. There are some good things about this redesign, such as the framing of the moon between the rocks, but overall I find that this new version of the map is a severe downgrade. When you think of a canyon or a mesa setting, a distinct color palette comes to mind immediately. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with doing something different, the intensity of the moonlight is way too overpowering. The blue moonlight and the orange textures are fighting for dominance, resulting in this messy gray soup. If the time of day absolutely has to be changed, I would opt for a dawn or dusk setting similar to Dorado, so the map's colors aren't drowned out by the moonlight. Speaking of moonlight, there's absolutely none of it in Eichenwald. This map is absolutely caked in orange, and it marks the beginning of a pattern we'll begin to see going forward. The color profile of this map is much warmer than the original, almost overwhelmingly so, but the grays in the stone textures and the greens in the foliage help mitigate this. Unlike the previous maps, the interior segments have changed quite a bit. They are now a bit darker and warmer thanks to the reduction in ambient lighting. This map also employs an interesting graphical effect where the sunlight simulates the movement of clouds. This effect becomes more obvious when the footage is sped up. King's Row is the next map to receive the orange treatment. Everything I liked about the Dorado redesign is not present here. In the original map, the blue ambience is broken up by a variety of lights emanating from the buildings. In this new version, the orange ambience is broken up by more orange from the buildings. Some green lights have been added throughout the map to help rectify this, but in my opinion this isn't enough to prevent the map from having a homogeneous appearance. Robot City is mostly unchanged again demonstrating how many dark areas are now darker compared to Overwatch 1. Moving on to the control maps, Oasis has been de-oranged, now being set during the night. It is true that this map has undergone a similar change to Route 66, with the color palette being dramatically flattened. However, the textures used in this map are not dominantly orange like the ones in Route 66. This allows the moonlight to create more neutral colors. I think this is one of the more successful redesigns in principle, even though the map is pretty unsaturated. Lijiang Tower continues the trend of orangification, though this new lighting is not as overpowering as Eichenwald's. Even compared to the daytime version of Lijiang Tower for CTF, there is some restraint with the warmth of the sunlight. I especially like how this new lighting illuminates interior sections of the map. Colors are more vibrant, possibly due to increased radiosity when baking the lighting. Although the dark purple profile of the original map will be missed, it's hard to call the new lighting for this level bad. In fact, this might be my favorite lighting change so far. It's pretty amazing what can be done when you don't go full orange. Okay, we've gone full orange. This new version of Ilios has a radically different color palette to the original. The lighting is so orange that the vibrancy of blues and greens have been significantly reduced. One thing I've always liked about Ilios is its rock-solid art direction. The level's assets are very distinct, with well-defined silhouettes from any angle. This still holds true in the new version, and prevents the map from becoming homogenous like King's Row. You can still tell which parts of the building are supposed to be blue, white, and so on. 
As a bonus, here's the CTF version of Ilios compared to the new version. The lighting is practically identical, with slightly more contrast in the Overwatch 2 version. Comparing the lighting in Ruins, we can see that the angle of the sunlight has changed in this stage, even though the angle in Lighthouse is identical. Does this mean Ilios has more than one sun? This is some deep lore. So yeah, that was every map from Overwatch 1 available in the current Overwatch 2 beta. But it's not every map that we've seen. Havana is set at night, with the first point being somewhat reminiscent of the original King's Row. Hollywood is set at... sunset, making it more orange. And Numbani is... well, we haven't seen Numbani yet. But if you go all the way back to the Overwatch 1 beta, Numbani was set during sunset. It's plausible that this version will make a comeback, meaning that there is still more Orange Watch 2 to come.